Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another week of the GRLCS Plat Capped Sentinel Division. This is week five. And in this game, we're going to be seeing Donzers, who are 0 4 right now, against Pigs Might Fly, who are also 0 4. And tonight, I'm joined by the wonderful Britty. How are you doing? Doing good tonight. I'm excited to see uh, which one of these teams is going to come away today with the dub. Uh, both these teams are really scratching for that win in this division. We'll have to see which come, come out on top here. Absolutely. And for the side of Donzers, it looks like we got a little bit of something happened here. Maybe, maybe not. But uh, before anything crazy happens, we do have ARG Rush, uh, Multi Rush in the top lane on the Wukong, Crims in the jungle on J4, AGR Rava on the Diana in the mid lane, and Jin and Lulu in the bot lane, piloted by Don Zero and Hey Babu. Meantime, we got pigs might fly on the red side. They were looking for an invade there, but for now we got Mr. Bum Rush up there in the top lane on the Nar, Rem Bones on the Lee Sin in the jungle, Smooth in, in the mid lane on the Talia, uh, and then the bot lane Nidella and Fluffy Fenrir on Misfortune and Nautilus, respectively. Yeah, it looks like we will get just the traditional startup with both of the junglers starting on the bottom side of the map. Uh, just looking at this from the top, the compositions seem rather interesting. If I'm Donzers, it really looks like I'm going for this Wombo Combo AoE destruction uh, in terms of Wukong, J4, and Diana kind of put together there. And, you know, Lulu's always a perfect uh, steroid to keep some people alive with wild growth. So yep. it'll be interesting to see if they're able to get some kills early and start kind of roaming the map and getting some picks. We were talking about this a little bit earlier before the stream started. Uh, if the if the side of Donzers can grab that Cataclysm on more than two members, that's just a team fight win for them. But uh, if they start to struggle to do that, there's a lot of counter engage and a lot of pick potential for the side of Pigs might fly. So it's going to be uh, more difficult for them to pilot team fights if they can't get that wombo combo. Absolutely, and and kind of the like uh, ugly stepbrother right now for Donzers comp is is the Jin. Thematically, doesn't fit that great with the uh, the composition, but furthermore with Jin Lulu into Nautilus uh, Misfortune, you put yourself in a really odd position where one misstep could just equal an all-in that just takes you to gray screen. So it'll be interesting to see how they kind of maneuver this lane in the early game. Yeah, we're seeing a bit of a difference in the padding from the junglers. Lee Sin deciding to full clear that bottom side, whereas Jarvan just really wants to grab. Uh, Red Krugs go immediately to his blue buff. Uh, maybe looking to try and influence this top side, let that Wukong with that TP ignite advantage over the Nar. Uh, get a little bit ahead in that lane, uh, but for now, he might actually be padding into the enemy jungle. So we got a bit of a trade going on in mid lane as well. Oh, he's actually like, behind the Talia now. Yeah, Jarvan's looking for Smooth. Gets a flash flag and drag, but Rava is in trouble. He gets ignited. But with the E double dash, he is going to be taken down. Smooth's taken down for first blood. And that's exactly what you want out of a Jarvan in the early game. Oh, but in the meantime, Rembos has found Jarvan as well. He gets the flag dragon with the wall, but he holds the resonating strike to make sure he gets that kill. Now, Babu's in trouble, takes the tower shot, burns the heal from the ADC. The Nidelia also got very low. Rembos flashing forward, looking for the crippling, uh, the cripple onto the uh, Diana, but could not find it. Sonic Wave Lance oh. is going to get there. The resonating strike, he is. He might just die to tower, but he gets the ward hop over the wall. He's going to stay alive. 2 0 on this Lee Sin already in the early game. And these two are just exploding onto the map, making things happen earlier. And we already see Talia moving to the bot side. Yeah, Talia looking for the roam. Doesn't look like anything's going to come out of it. Just a flash burned from Dawn Zero, but he still gets kit up by the Talia knockback. Fluffy Fender now in trouble as the TP is burned by Rava. Krim's looking for the re-engage on this. Smooth's in a bit of trouble. Flag drag over the wall. Flash forward from Rava means that it is going to be a kill picked up. It's just a matter of who does it go to. Looks like Krims is going to pick that one up. And in the meantime, Mr. Bumbrush has teleported down. Is looking for the pressure on the Hey Babu. Now another teleporter's burn. Multi Rush is looking to fight his way into this fight. Bumbrush needing to walk away here. Don Zero wants to recall. Maybe just a bit of miscommunication from the teams. Multi Rush gets a bit of damage onto Bomb Rush, but it looks like there's not going to be much follow up from there. And Rush in Rush is definitely the name of the game here. We have already seen this turn into quite the explosive exchange starting in the mid lane and moving all the way down the bot side. And oh my gosh, these teams are looking to accomplish things. Yeah, non-stop action in this early game. They're really trying to make this, uh, <laughs> trying to make these comps explode early. Uh, right now, I think favor slightly in the side of Donzers, giving themselves about a thousand gold lead out of that. 
Uh, but I think the kills are a bit better placed for the side of Pigs Might Fly. Really getting those kills on Deleeson early, definitely important for their team. Oh, absolutely. Especially with his uh, nerfs, I think it was on this last patch, removing like two base AD from him. You'd be able to kind of propel him a, full, a bit ahead of uh, the timing in the early game will be great for them to have that pick potential. I think the Talia is actually doing more work than I originally wanted to give it credit for. Uh, I think some of these pieces so far, especially with that seismic shove, has made uh, some changes here in the early parts. I think if things looked a little bit di different, Don Zero would have found himself on the wrong end of a Nautilus Talia. Yeah, definitely uh, a bit unfortunate that it's landed two, uh, zero and two in this early game, but I think the playmaking, the idea has been there. It's just now going to be about the execution being landed. Uh, Fluffy Fenrir looking for a Roman to mid lane. He might catch out. Hey, Babu goes for the flash auto attack, gets the root. Seismic shove pulls Hey, Babu back. He has his flash. He's still holding on to it. Fluffy Fenrir looking for it, but it looks like it is just going to be Rembones picking up that kill, sniping it away from his mid laner, going 3 0 on Lisa. Mr. Problem Rush hey. looking for the engage into the top lane. He's got a two level lead over Multi Rush. Not sure how that happened this early into the game, but he's going to be exerting that pressure onto that Wukong now. Absolutely, and I think a lot of it came from that early TP down to the bot side. The wave state was just not where it needed to be for multi-rush. So Mr. Bomb Rush was able to actually stack up some waves and get that XP advantage early, which just makes it even harder for Wukong to be able to play this into, you know, a semi-ranged matchup that is a, uh, a NAR. Yeah, now. big wave crashing in the top lane now. Multi-rush kind of needing to play this one a bit more carefully. The Narbar not full yet. No real threat of a dive. It looks like it's just going to be plates handed over. As Pigs Might Fly is looking to start up this dragon right now. Krems gets into the pit to contest. Rembones has that level 6 and kicks him out of it. Looks like they are going to smite the dragon away. Ravel got a great moonfall onto two members, but it's just not going to be enough right now. Rembones picked up. Kill given over to Dawn Zero. Looks like they're looking for any more follow up here, but it looks like. With the Glitterlance landing, Fluffy Fenrir slowed up, getting to the other side of the blast plane. He is going to get himself away, but in the meantime, topside Mr. Brum Rush was able to pick up Multi Rush there before he could hit that level six mark. We just continue to see these fights all over the map. Wave state be damned. We're just going to make things happen. I think that topside is going to be an issue for the side of Donzers. I don't want to say this is unplayable, but you're down nearly 20 CS. You're getting solo killed, and now. Uh, just giving up more tower plating to Anar, who can really take over this lane quickly. Good it... vision from the bot side of Pigs Might Fly means they're gonna they're gonna sniff out this dive, make sure nothing comes of it. This is gonna be tower plates handed over. Split between four, not the best allocation of gold, uh, but I think for now, just getting that golden experience onto Don Zero is what they want to do. Get this gin as far ahead as possible. Oh, absolutely, and yeah, that's like the moment in solo queue where you're pinging danger stay away from the tower please let me get some gold but instead we're just going to be our gold instead of my gold at that point but like you said Jin definitely needs to get propelled forward i think that based off of the enemy composition he's going to have to look towards uh either a just being well ahead or or b start looking towards some of those pen items into what can be the semi tanky nar as well as nautilus who's a full-on tank to be able to try to get these guys down because the backline access uh, for the side of Donzers is pretty huge outside of him. So I think he's just going to be stuck playing the game of ADC hits the thing closest to him and, and prays that his team does well. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the big issue with the side of Donzers right now. They really don't have a lot of tank shred. And with how beefy Nar and Nautilus can get, it can definitely be difficult for Jin to get through them. If that's his job this game, I'd love to see him go for... The Lord Dominic Scarred, a great sidestep from Fluffy Fan. You got a curtain call, opens up, but he's just turned around immediately onto the hook. Don Zero looking very low. Krims looking for the re engage here. Fluffy Fan, incredibly low. He is going to be picked up by Krims here, most likely. Maybe even give over the kill to Don Zero. Very well played. Cataclysm comes down onto Misfortune. They're looking for the follow up. Needs some sort of damage onto Nidelia, but Krims is doing the work, getting the auto attacks in. He'll burn. Maybe he's going to live to know the flag and drag takes him down. And a good show from Bob who guarantees Krims walks out of there. And we do see Rimbones up on the top side of the map saying, hey, there's not much I can do down there, but I can at least try to keep us in the game, make the cross map play to the Herald. Uh, maybe donate that gold over to Mr. Bum Rush and get a good first tower down on the top side of the map would probably be the play. Yeah, that tower sitting at uh, two and a bit plates. That's a perfect spot for the Herald to come in, charge it, and just take it all down. 
wave or not. It's just a matter of not popping that Rift Herald into the wave that's already there. Looks like it is going to avoid that, so that should just be first tower guaranteed, and maybe even a dive on the multi-rush as he was not able to get out of tower range in time. Mr. Bomb Rush, good, good Cyclone from multi-rush means he's going to start walking out of there, but a good ward hop from Rembones means it is just going to be taken down. Sonic Wave to secure the kill. Solo kill for Rembones. And we're just seeing Rembones getting work done all over the map on this Lee Sin, and now we really kind of have that continued split map situation where we've seen Crims doing a lot of work in the bottom side uh, in, in getting these kills on the Don Zero, trying to move him ahead with Rembones and Mr. Bumrush just being a terror in the top side of the map. And Harold's going to get, I got another charge off onto the T2 and that's probably just gone. Yeah, they might pick up a full tier two tower here. Uh, in this spot, if you're Wukong, you're looking at that tier two tower take. We're going to have to take a break on that. Slow fan rear gets the hook onto Hey Babu. But at the same time, Rob is looking for the engage into mid lane. Looks like they are just going to be able to walk out of there, but Hey Babu might look for the trade back onto Fluffy Fenrir. Don Zero doesn't have access to that curtain call just yet. They're looking for it, but a good hook from Fluffy Fenrir maybe is just going to be able to walk away there. Absolutely, and that is the downside to the curtain call. I think more times in team play, we'll see it used as an entrance into the fight or something to kind of cause a little bit of chaos. Sadly, when you use it in lane or use it in some of these scenarios, you just open yourself up to so much CC as you're looking farther out as opposed to close to you, as we saw the last time that Don Zero opened up the curtains. Yeah, especially with the Nautilus. Very easy access to CC. Even Talia, who could get that seismic shove onto him. Lee Sin looking for that uh, Sonic Wave. Gnar looking to get that Gnar bar off. Uh, definitely lots of ways that the curtain call can be dangerous to use, and I think more likely we'll be seeing it uh, laid over on top of the crowd control that we're already seeing from the Don, uh, the Donzer side, as opposed to looking to start the fight with it. Right Absolutely. now, we've got the Ocean Dragon spawning in a couple of seconds. Both teams looking for their way to position in this fight. We do see Diana up towards the uh, mid lane side, maybe looking for a flank uh, to try to get off a good Moonfall. I think that whoever starts it, whether it be Krims or... Uh, Rava, one of the two really have to get a good combo in to, to get this Wombo going. Curtain call opened up. Bomb Rush looking to stop the combo before it can start in the first place. A good smite from Rembones means it is going to be taken down. Multi Rush now getting stunned up by the Narbar. Looking for his way into the fight, but there's no team follow-up. In the meantime, Chris is getting blown up by Smooth. He picks up the kill there. Now Rava in trouble. Good flash kick from Rembones means Rava's going to have to flash away himself. Now 3v1 under the tower. Good Moonfall into Smooth means he is going to trade one back. Maybe even two if Rembones Bones can't get out in time. No, the safeguard means he is going to get out. But a good one for one trade from Rava. But overall, a three for one in the fight in favor of Pigs Might Fly. And that is the key issue with these uh, Wombo Combo style comps is that, well, Wukong really can't start it. He is 0 3 right now, definitely behind the power curve in terms of itemization. And then you really just have to rely on either Crims or Rava to find that good engage. But while you're kind of posturing around, uh, the other team could just walk at you with Gnar, with Nautilus, even uh, Rimbones at the state he's at. Ooh, a good hook from Fluffy Fenrir. Teleport coming down from Multi Rush. Fluffy Fenrir now in a lot of trouble. Ignite and health burned down. Flashes away, but he's already dead. Mr. Brown Rush looking for the trade in the meantime. In mid lane, Krim's getting very low, but not in range of that Gnar ulti just yet. So no kill going over there. Gosh, yeah, and we're continuing to see, I guess, the. The beauty of a Lulu into a Nautilus, just be able to hit that uh, polymorph and just say, no, your combo stops now. We do see oh, a we're gonna have to hold on to that bomb rush, teleporting back into Don Zero. Burns the heal immediately for the move speed to try and get away. A good polymorph is going to slow this play down. Don Zero still getting incredibly low. A great wild growth from Bobby means that he is going to live. Shut down, go give it over to Multi Rush. Nigeli on force to flash away. A great turnaround and a good teleport from Multi Rush means it's a good punish. Or a good, uh, not a good teleport from Multi Rush, a good teleport punish onto Bum Rush means that they are going to be able to take this play in their favor. Absolutely, and this is slowly getting Multi Rush back into the game. We just said a second ago he was 0 3, and now he's picked up two kills. Good sidestep onto the Nautilus, hoping that Nidelia is running him down. He's still walking in division. They still know exactly where he is. He hasn't burned that clone just yet. Luffy Fenrir looking to line up the hook. Multi Rush looking to walk back in. The exhaust is burned. The Cyclone is burned, but I don't think there's any way he's getting out of this one. 
Good clone. Maybe looking for a trade on to Nidelia. Good auto attacks in. Getting a lot of damage in. The heal is burned from Nidelia, but now the teleport has come in from Rava. Looking for his way in. He doesn't have, ac has have access to Moonfall. Great three man Moonfall, but he is going to be taken down before the damage comes down. He'll still pick up the kill on to Nidelia, but that is a two for one in favor of Pigs Might Fly. Messy fights all over the map. You're just looking to see what's not on cooldown and when can I use it. We're just seeing them fight tooth and nail around this bottom side of the map. Uh, both towers still up though. Don Zero continuing going continuing to fight. Don Zero Gale forcing forward into smooth. He is going to take him down. In the meantime, the tower gets traded into the bottom side. Just fight, fight, fight. No team wanting to slow the pace of this game down at all. Absolutely. Now we do see some of these mythic items coming through like we just saw with the uh, Gale Force on Jin. Uh, we do have a Night Harvester on Diana as well as the Divine Sunder complete on Nar and the Gorge Rinker on Lee Sin, which kind of moves the game forward. I'm personally more of a fan of the, the jungle style build with Riftmaker and uh, Conquer on uh, Diana, but I do see a lot of people using the Night Harvester to get the move speed and continue into the fights. So, you know, I'm not going to say it's, it's troll by any means, but, you know, maybe just not as much as I like it. It's definitely a different style of build, and I'm going to be showing my biases here. I do think that Proto Belt might be a little bit better in this situation over Night Harvester. I think that flat magic pen, especially if you're going into the Squishies, the Talia, and that Misfortune, who really aren't going to be able to afford a lot of magic uh, resistance this game, that flat magic pen is going to be really nice for you. Uh, but Night Harvester does a similar job. We'll have to see if it works out for him. Lucky Fenrir taking a bit of damage here. Just trying to secure vision around that Scuttle Crab, but good defense from Donzers means it's not going to be allowed. It looks like the game yeah. is going to slow down ever so slightly. Just a little bit from the breakneck speed. And this is where we start to see, I, I would say, one of the troughs for Jin after his first item. He has amazing kill pressure on the Talia, on the Misfortune. Uh, but against these tankier targets, even just on their uh, on one item for Nar and just some pieces right now going into the locket for Nautilus, he starts to do a lot less damage at this point in the game. Oh. Rava almost getting pulled. Sonic Wave lands onto Don Zero, but they're not looking for the engage. Shishreli has been popped. It looks like they're going to look for the engage here. Here's the Wombo combo we were looking for. Cataclysm and the Cyclone on top of the Misfortune Nautilus, and they are just instantly deleted. Two kills given over to Don Zero. Very well played from Don Zero, and that's going to give him the Drake. That is what they've been looking for all day. Oh, Multi Rush might be in a little bit of trouble. Just walks away. It's going to take the clone and walk out of there. But that is a 6-0 and o Jin right now. We were a little worried about him before the start of the game, thinking that Jin doesn't really fit compositionally, but he's been piloting it very well. We'll have to see if he can continue this into the mid and late game. Sonic Absolutely. Lands. No Lee C, a Lee Sin syndrome right now for Rembones. Actually not taking the push in. Not looking to take advantage of the resonating strike just yet. Thinks, hey, maybe the Jarvan is nearby, which he was, even if uh, Jin has no mana. Still a dangerous fight to take. Lulu is Lulu, and that champion is very difficult to engage on. Oh, absolutely. And and that's the other piece, as we said, that Don Zero has been piloting this Jin very well. And in turn, hey, Babu has been playing this masterfully and punishing at every chance that he can uh, with the Polymorph and just the Glitter Lance and, and base damage uh, that Lulu can kind of do in lane and really pushing those advantages. At this yeah. point, in the game uh with just about a minute and 20 seconds left for uh baron to come on the map that'll be the next interesting piece to see because neither team's in real contention yet for soul uh so seeing how they may play around the top side of the map and posture towards that because i kind of favor uh you had me at poncho for being able to take that a little bit faster Jin not known for being able to burn down targets Ooh, rava looking for an engage on the smooth big damage burst maybe looking to force him out of the fight before it starts good glacial means that he's going to be forced down narbar goes a little wide only grabbing multi rush there good flash away but it's still caught by the nautilus hook bob rush picks up the kill on the rava he's not allowed to play the game today too much crowd control you can run you can hide but you cannot stop Ooh, Rambo is going to be in trouble. Black's Cone into Babu and Krims. They're looking for the engage here. Sarex popped away from Rambo's now. Fluffy Fenrir looking to defend his jungler. Good Cyclone onto three. Gets the second one as well. Godlike for Dawn Zero. The Cataclysm lands onto two. But the bullet time over the top is so much damage. How can you survive it? 
Don Zero looking for his way into this fight, but in the meantime, another great Glacial from Smooth, but he's just gonna die for it. Legendary now is Don Zero. 8 0 on this Jin. It's just trading back and forth again. No breaks on the train. Nidelia now in trouble. A good W. Good flash forward from Bobby for the slow. The heal gets burned, but now the re engage. Bone Rush looking for his way in. Rambo picks up that shutdown gold. 850 gold into his pocket. Moonfall is denied by Bone Rush. And now Multi Rush is in the back line looking for the pickup on the Nidelia. His teammates aren't paying attention. They are looking for where their ADC is. He's going to get stunned up now. The Sonic Wave lands. The Resonating Strike is coming in. Multi Rush is going to be taken down. Now 7 and 1 on the Lee Sin, just trailing behind that 8 and 1 Jin. Ooh, that was a hell of a fight. That was carnage right there. This is prime League of Legends. We've just seen so much getting done from the side of Donzers, as well as just the kickback from Poncho. You know, I was going to say before all this happened that Don Zero picked up the Rapid Fire Cannon as his second item on Jin. And that just gives him so much more ability to poke, especially uh, those four shots. When you think you're going to get away, he gets energized and is able to just catch you out at a longer distance that will make him even more of a threat right now uh just masterly played from both sides unfortunate for multi rush on the tail in there to kind of get the flank angle and not be able to use it uh but we're rush. seeing the rotate from talia so quickly the narvar actually picking up that scuttle crab away from crims it means that pigs <laughs> might fly is going to keep vision on that baron buff good for them uh, Don Zero picking up that red buff, but yeah, that was just a crazy fight. I, I gotta say, with this particular uh, build path that Jin is going on, I'm assuming that's a collector after this rapid fire cannon. He's definitely looking for a lot more uh, backline target access as opposed to the uh, tank shredder that we were expecting him to try and be. Uh, maybe going for something like uh, Lord Dominic's. Now multi rush in trouble. Good use of the glacial active from Smooth, but multi rush is going to be able to walk out of there. Yeah, this Wukong has just been bullied out of this game. This poor monkey. Poor monk. Hey, he still gets a good cyclone in every now and again. And yeah, I was going to say that the the uh, glacial uh, item that was picked up by Talia is an interesting choice. Everfrost uh, has been used on a lot of traditional mages. The extra health you get from the Kindle Gym is nice and a little bit more durability. I, but I was expecting, honestly, to see more of a Luden's oh, Tempest. Put it on pause. Crimson's looking for the engage, but the re-engage is super clean from Fluffy Fenrir and Nidelia. Just shadowing their mid laner, making sure he can stay safe. Smooth flashing in to get the kill. Rob lands the Moonfall onto one, and that means Smooth is going to be picked up there. Not just yet, though, surviving for so long. Rava now getting bursted out. Good shields from Lulu. Good wild growth from Lulu. He's the burst is going to come back in, but it's just not enough right now. Don Zero exhausted on the back line, just dealing with Fluffy Fender. Here's that tank shred that we were talking about. He just can't get through that Nautilus health bar. And that means Nidelia and Mr. Bumrush are able to run a train on the rest of his team. Four for one in favor of Pigs Might Fly. Absolutely. Oh, well, Mr. Oh, Don Zero. Don Zero. He picks a one at the very least, gets a trade back, but that's still overall a five for two. Not what you want to see if you're a Donzers fan. Four. Yeah, four Donzers at a few points there. Multi Rush has just not been able to scale into the game. We got put behind and told to stay behind, just getting bullied out. And Smooths, uh, we've seen him do some crazy performances on things like the uh, Victor earlier in the split, and now we're seeing the same craziness able to just kind of weave in and out of the fray on this Talia and get some good damage down. And on the opposite side, like you said, Don Zero just was getting bullied. Just absolutely bullied by Nautilus on the back line, not able to enter the fight at all. Oh, a great Gnar from Bum Rush is going to deny that flag and drag, but with the Cataclysm coming down, I think he's still dead. Smooth's looking to support his top laner. He might actually be able to trade back onto Crims. Oh my gosh. No, Mr. Bum Rush is still alive. <laughs> Rob and Multi Rush looking for any kind of damage to get back into this cyclone is going to land onto Smooth. Maybe looking to turn the burst onto him instead. They are going to pick him up. Moonfall lands onto Mr. Bum Rush, and that's two kills given over to Rava. But man, that was a lot messier than it needed to be. A two for two trade overall. Yeah, this is 50 50 gaming, it feels like. They're just constantly fighting back and forth. That was wonderfully played by Mr. Brum Rush, as well as the rotate up from Smooth to at least equal it out. It's like you said, it should have been a lot easier than that. Oh, Bobby, you're going up too far. Support on your own. A flash forward from Fluffy Friend here is going to guarantee that kill. That might just be the Baron give over two pigs might fly. It doesn't look like they're going to go for it right now. The respawn's a little bit too close from Crimson Rava. Adelia, maybe too far forward now. Takes a lot of damage. Don Zero looking for the trade back, but he's just deleted Rava taken out of the fight. Absolutely, and this goes to one of the things we said kind of offline. Oh my, 
Oh. He leaves with a sliver of HP, and now Nautilus is going to be able to body block it. Renvo's coming in just to guarantee that the body block happens. Adelia living with a sliver of HP. That early Vamp Scepter that he picked up, actually putting in a lot of work for him over the course of this game. Absolutely. Yeah, we're seeing uh, sort of the the meta build on Misfortune right now, that Kraken Slayer right into a Bloodthirster. Makes her deceivingly, like able to stay alive in the most interesting circumstances as we do see she's finished it off and another bf sword on the way um it, it is absolutely crazy that really the side of you had me at poncho built this jack of all trades style comp that we were kind of talking about earlier where they have just this pick potential they have the ability to kind of fight front to back and just face check everything um uh, but Donzers will always have kind of like that LPL like super play style where if they just get one wombo They could change this entire game around even though they're down about 7k gold right now Yeah, they're looking for it. The moonfall onto mr. Bum rush the narbar trade back the good stun the wild rush is gonna keep Rava alive But in the meantime pigs might fly are pushing into this bottom side But now Donzers might look to just start the baron now that that nar is not there. That's their big team fight ulti clued in he's down for another 35 seconds even without massive Baron Shred from the ABC, this might just be a free take for Donzers. Rambones is here. He's looking for the steal. He's looking for anything he can do. The flag over the wall is going to spot him. Sonic Wave lands on the Baron. It's down to three and a half thousand. They're holding it. They're waiting for it. Really good patience. But in the meantime, their base is being destroyed. They have to either finish this or heal off of it. They got to make the choice. The flashing from Rambones, the smite is not there. He doesn't pick it up. But right now, he's just stalling for time so his team can take the base. He Sonic Wave's over the wall. Shut down. Go give it over to Rava. A thousand gold in his pocket. But now Donzers has to recall two in his down, maybe even three for them in this game. The Baron buff recall is quick though. Nidalia now on their own. This fortune gonna get picked up before they can pick up the inhib. The second inhib doesn't even fall. A good base defense from Donzers. Curtain call opens up. Fenrir body blocking for his mid laner to make sure that he can get out. At least one person stays alive here. And that's four for nothing in favor of the side of Donzers. And they get the Baron buff, but they lose a lot of their base in the process. That was almost a 500 IQ clay from uh, Pigs Might Fly in the sense that they almost played this perfectly and said, fine, we'll give you Baron. We'll just start tearing across their, uh, tearing apart the base and turn around and, and just kind of out macro you. They sadly split up a little too hard. Uh, so they're only able to actually pick up one inhib in the process and giving up those four kills as well as a hefty shutdown. Uh, to Rava, that's just going to propel them forward. Now sitting on those three items, the Lynchbane, as well as the Zhonya's Hourglass. Yeah, definitely going to keep them a lot safer, but finally picking up that Zhonya's. I do have to wonder if maybe just going for a bit more flat AP, Rava really is the damage carry of this Donzer's side right now. Don Zero able to put down a lot of damage onto Squishies. Uh, but that AoE team fight uh, you were talking about, Rembo's getting bursted out. The Moonfall lands on the two with a great wild growth on top of it. There's Rumbo slashes away, but the Cataclysm is there. Creeps sweeping in to make sure Mr. Bob Rush has nowhere to go. The kill given over to Rava. Two for nothing. It looks like Donzers might have found their way back into this game. They picked up two of their first towers and now are looking to pick up their third. Dragon is coming soon. Looks like even though Pigs Might Fly had the gold lead for the majority of this game, about even two minutes ago, just about 8,000 in their favor. Now suddenly we're getting a lot closer, settling down to about 1,000 gold lead, and that's the second Infernal Dragon for this Donzer's side. They might have found their way to turn around the game. Absolutely. There was so much gold sitting on the map for them in just the the kind of botched uh, split push into their base by the sides of Pigs Might Fly really turn this around for them to where they can just pick up a lot of that gold get more under their carries now seeing you know near three items complete on the gin working into that fourth with that last whisper uh just so much has changed in order to their side and now they have another five minutes to continue to scale into this game and kind of make this gold lead even less than it is yeah especially with infernal dragons on someone like Jin, who scales ad incredibly well on the wukong who's been a bit behind this game on this diana who's Maybe gone for a bit more of that defensive build. Those Infernal Dragons are really going to be that steroid that Donzers need to make sure that these carries are doing as much damage as possible. And if they can stack three or even four in this game, depending on how late we go, uh, it could be a disaster for Pigs Might Fly. Oh, absolutely. And, and this is prime Jin gaming hours right here. Anybody who plays Jin, 
absolutely loves it when you're sitting on these three items at this point in the game. You just can do so much and deal so much damage, especially with the last Whisper now. These targets are just becoming all equally either, you know, four shots or now maybe three shots to kill them. And it, and with the uh, Gale Force as well, he just has so much mobility to kind of dance around these team fights while Crims and, you know, Multi Rush and Rava are all just kind of running into them and creating all this chaos. He can just artistfully find kills like he has been this entire time. Yeah, this is definitely a spot where you love to be in the game as Jin. Finally picking up that Lord Dominic's regards means he's not only going to have the squishy threat, but also the shred onto the tanks like Rembones, like Bum Rush, even like Fenrir, who I think has opted into the, the correct build for the situation, just getting that pure armor, not uh, getting any extra health, just trying to be as much of a beefy frontliner into this Jin as can be. Ms. Fortune has also hit that three item power spike sitting on that Infinity Edge. If she crits, it'll be painful as hell. But it's also a matter of it's just less consistent than this gin build right now. The oh, inhibs are still down for Donzer, so they're still in a bit of a tricky spot. If they leave their base and they lose a fight, the game is just over, so they have to play it perfectly. Absolutely. And the thing to note here as well is, you know, not only do they have so many kills on the gin, he has also been out farming. Oh. Buffy Fenrir looking for his engage bullet time over the top on the tube, but the Cataclysm is huge on the three members! There it is! There's the wobble combo that Donsus have been looking for, but maybe it's not enough damage. Robin not able to get all of the damage in. The Moonfall finally comes down, landing on the four members, gets taken down. That's two kills. Give it over to Pigs Might Fly, and they may have, we may have cast their curse, then the turnaround might not be possible. It's a two for nothing in their favor, and they might just look to end the game here, pushing in on these inhibitors. Don Zero still looking to put the damage down. Good damage away from Nidelia. The Lulu is there to keep him alive. The second inhibitor coming down. Big damage onto Rembones. Big damage. There's the flag and drag goes in. Mr. Bumrush is taken down. They're looking to continue the fight. Chris is looking a little bit low. GA popped onto Rembones. They're looking for the re-engage. Good defense from Smooth and Fluffy Fenrir. Passive is used there. Smooth looking for any damage onto Don Zero, but Krims has the speed up. Good seismic shot to keep Krims out of the fight. Don Zero gets taken down, and that might just be the game. Lucky Fender, big frontliner on this Nautilus. Adelia picks up the kill into Krims, and now it's just Bobu left. Rava spawning in three seconds. Multi rush is up. Maybe they can mount a base defense with the AoE that they have. Moonfall is almost off cooldown. The low health bars the pigs might fly might just force them back and they don't get the end of the game yet, but that is three inhibitors down. Now Donzer's in a much more dangerous spot. Oh, my heart just sank. That was wild to be able to get everything they were looking for and it not to be enough. Don Zero just trying to, with everything he had, keep this base alive and be able to trade back. But like you said, between Smooth's just making these beautiful plays and getting people out of the fight to Rembone's being at the point where he is just so tanky with the Sterics gauge, with the ability to come back in the GA, there's just so many tools on the sides of Pig Might Fly that just allow them to kind of eke out these battles one after another. Uh, we may have cast or cursed, and we were talking so much about how Jin has finally hit that power spike. Both the Rush's cyclones have been really good this game. rava has been hitting the Moonfalls, but just in that fight, they were just like frames off of what they needed to be. Rava not getting that ulti off before he got into the Zanyas. Multi Rush and Krims getting in there before Rava had access to the fight. It was just. They were just a bit out of sync, a bit out of tempo, and now with the dragon spawning in 13 seconds, it might be the Infernal Soul over to Pigs Might Fly, and that may just be the game for them. Yeah, we're gonna have to see. It, the biggest thing is, I don't, like, the side of Donzers doesn't have the wave clear for this triple inhib, so they are actively about to start losing towers in the base while... Good kick away, Fly could knock up a huge gnar onto Mr. Bomb Rush from the inside, but in the meantime, Rava is running a train up in the back line, Multi Rush finally into the fight, getting the Cyclone and Idelia. He is picked out. Don Zero still alive in this fight. Good peel from Hey Babu, but Smooth and Mr. Bomb Rush are looking for their way into him. Looking for any kind of engage onto Don Zero. He doesn't have any life. See, the Sonic Blade lands, the Resonating Strike lands, but he doesn't have all the health lost yet. The good peel from Lula means he's going to stay alive, and it's just not enough right now. Hey, Babu picks up the kill, but Talia ulting into the base because the game's already over. Pigs might fly, picks up their first win of the series. Oh, my Love God. Love to see it. That was what you call hard fought League of Legends right there from both sides, 0 to 100 the entire game. That was a game. Congratulations to Pigs Might Fly for picking up their first win of the uh, of the tournament. But man alive, that was a hard-fought victory. If you had taken off the nameplates 
and, t- and didn't tell me the scoreline of either of these teams, I wouldn't be able to tell you if they were top two or bottom two. Absolutely. That is what we call prime GRLCS right there. You never know when we're going to flip the script. Yeah, really impressively played from all sides here. Uh, I do think that it's it's a bit of a tragic game from the side of Donzu's. Very, very tragic that they could not find their lead into that fight. Maybe different item builds, maybe different positioning in those team fights. Maybe that last one where Rava and uh, Crimson Multi Rush were just a bit out of sync. Just a lot of what ifs, but I think they had the right ideas and they executed really well. I don't think. I think every team in this, uh, or every player in this game played out of their mind. And I think it's gonna be impressive to see where they go from here next. Absolutely. And you know, we're gonna have to go for just a quick second, but we'll have to see if the next game can live up to the hype of this one. We'll talk to you here in a minute.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our second game of the evening where we're going to see Ergotum, who's currently 2-2 two and two, against Dead Dudbro Gaming, who are also 2-2. Two and two. On the red side, we have Jimbo Slice on set, Apache Helicopter on the Zed in the jungle, Fallen in the mid lane with Cassiopeia. In the bottom lane, we'll see Akshan and Thresh piloted by Dario and Lipa and Gadim 1106. And to introduce the red side, Mr. Britty. And on the red side, we do have Dud Bro Gaming. We're looking for a top side in Brayton right now. Kakovu on the top in the top lane with that Camille. Duddy Brains on the Sejuani. Law is on that Talon. Q Lu on that Ziggs and Airtone on the Nautilus. And they got themselves a pretty spicy top side invade. No vision on them right now. Apache helicopter might be in trouble. Nautilus lands into the bush. Zed forced to start W and gets himself out of the way, but now Jimbo Slice in trouble. The hook goes wide, he flashes forward. Looks like it's just going to be a trade of flash for flash. Uh, a bit ugly on the invade, but we'll, we'll, we take those, we take those. Top later support uh, flash trade. <laughs> That's the, the small victories. And Aerotone did go with Hex Flash. You know what? It's not even a real spell. We're fine. We're okay. Who needs Flash do? when you just have Hex Flash and you just sit and push all game? But uh, Apache Helicopter being forced to start W, not great for his jungle clear. Uh, I don't know a ton about Zed's jungle uh, abilities, but I think to have a like really good clear, I assume that you want to start one of your damage abilities. Yeah, I don't think the movement ability is the play for that, for sure. It'll be interesting. I have not seen that much uh, Zed jungle. I know when I was doing some prep for... Uh, the coverage of worlds that Talon jungle on EU West is is one of the top plays right now, uh, but we do see him in the mid lane here. Yeah, we do have uh, that AD assassin in mid combined with that Ziggs AP carrying the bot side to make sure that their damage uh, is spread out evenly. They're not tacking too far into AD or AP. The Talon into Cassio, I have to imagine early game if Talon can't grab that kill, it's going to be very painful for him. Airtone gets the level 2, lands the hook, a good hook return from Godim. It's going to make a nice damage trade, press the attack proc from Dario. He's going to get that passive proc as well. Big damage onto Airtone on the Nautilus, good aftershock trade. Great uh, response from Godim to land that hook. Oh, absolutely, and that's that's exactly what I think you have to look for in that lane. Uh, either way is kind of the trade for trade. I think Thresh has a little bit more leeway in that regard, but yeah, that's exactly what Godim has to do every time. Yeah, if, uh, that's pretty much Thresh's matchup into any hook champion. If they're going to hook you, you just hook them immediately back. Trade those Aftershock procs. Just make sure that you don't take too much damage in the return. And even with your flay, look for some extra damage return. Unfortunately, he was level one there, but still played it correctly. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And Gotti, or not Gotti, Clue is, is taking uh, his Satchel Charge level two, which is really interesting. How much he's been throwing in a bit out. of trouble. Sejuani passes, starting to stack up. The Haymaker goes a little bit wide, just clearing the wave. Looking to give the kill over to Kovu, and that is first blood given over to Duddy Brains on the Sejuani. Hey, we, we love some kills on Sejuani. We love a good hamster rider. That is exactly what I would expect is right now. Oh, no. The Miasma comes out. There looking for the way in onto Laws, but he is playing Talon. He has got a little bit of that hardcore park or. Now Dario and Gaudium are looking for the trade back. Gaudium's got the level 3 lantern over the wall to get on Dario in, but Lost just jumps into his waiting arms. A great hook lands onto Clue. Satchel charge over the wall. Good flash from him. Good presence of mind to not, uh, uh, not panic too much like I just did right there. And that's a double kill given over to Dario on this Akshan, being very accelerated very early in this game. Oh, absolutely. And that's kind of what we were talking a bit about with uh, Akshan bot. Is there's either two schools of thought to where you're gonna just take some damage from that haymaker big true damage trade from jimbo slice a good trade back great uh stun on top of kovu there oh absolutely and that was the the concept is either our auction has to get ahead through kills or roaming one of the two because of how he generally scales a solo laner to get to that item breakpoint 
Uh, so him picking up those two kills early definitely accelerate the game for him. Buddy Brands back up top, punishing this set for not having that flash early. A second kill over to Sejuani. Uh, if this was solo cube, Kobe was definitely spam painting the hell out of this Sejuani. But you know what? It's fine. A it kill's a kill. Everything is okay. You know, all I can think of is the uh, the old Spider-Man meme where it's like, I've got you for three minutes, but it's five. Because that's what happens when you don't have flash and your name is set. You're just going to get camped by the enemy jungler. Ashy Helicopter looking for the engage and onto Laws, but Airtone is there. A great hook lands onto Clue again. He's going to be picked up. Gaudium taking the trade. Kovu looking for the teleport into this fight. Airtone looking to continue it in any way possible. Akshon gets that hook shot out, but Kovu gets his own hook shot in. Laws picks up the damage on top of him. Airtone flashes forward looking for the trade, but Gaudium is going to pick up the kill even with the hook going wide. And another messy game. It's going to be kills traded back and forth all across the map. Oh, we love ourselves some messy games. They heard us say that, we, you know, we got to live up to that beautiful Donzers picked my fly game. And they said, we got you. Now, unfortunately, Camille burns the fly, or the uh, teleport to go bot side and support this play. Maybe gets another kill off of it. Good Ooh. stone. Good stone from uh, Fallen. But he's going to get stunned up by that Sejuani passive. Camille Sejuani, a big combo. But the damage is coming through onto Kovu. He's going to be traded back. Good conquer, conquer usage and very usage from Fallen. He's just going to be able to trade one for one there. My goodness. Yeah, wonderfully played by Fallen. And this goes on to exacerbate the piece that I was going to say is that Camille does not have TP. Her wave state was not doing that good. So Jimbo Slice was able to kind of push in, uh, get some damage down, some free tower plating. And now Clue has to go to the top lane to kind of cover this. It looks like they will just lane swap it out. But uh, you, the last thing you need in life is Jimbo Slice to get ahead uh, in this matchup. Yeah, after they've been doing such a good job of putting him behind, to see that CS number is at even. I have to say, Kovu has been doing a great job of getting presence on the map, working with Sejuani, getting those passive stacked together. But now he's just in a lane that is going to be a bit of suffering into a poke and a hook a lane as a Camille. He does finally have that level 6 mark, so maybe offering a bit more threat onto Dario, with Sejuani being on the bot side, and Laws here too. They might look for the play. Looks like they are going to sniff that one out. No play is going to be had just yet. Yeah, it's almost a little bit of a situation of too much cowbell uh, from the side of of uh, Dudbro, because Talon has been roaming a lot and getting a little bit here and there, but the last thing you want to do is just give free pressure to Cassiopeia to continue farming up in the mid lane notoriously known for just that two to three item spike where she takes over the game uh with the life steal from the twin fang it's just so much in team fights yeah cassio does not need to go and buy boots just getting the free uh movement speed from her passive it means that she doesn't have to spend that 1100 gold on those penetration boots that gold can go more towards her mythic and more towards her uh second item power spike uh, really allows that champion to pull ahead earlier against these champs that do need to build boots. Now Apache, two levels down onto Laws. Laws just moving directly in. Apache helicopter failing the flash over the wall. Not going to be able to get out. And Dario is going to be good guy Oxshot. Revive his juggler. And that looks like it's just going to be the dragon picked up for Urgotum. So unfortunate. If your name's Apache Helicopter on the Zed, I feel like, again, not saying we're experts on Zed gaming, but I, I feel like he should uh, wait till he's like probably level six or seven. I think once he has access to the ultimate and is able to get a little bit more damage down, probably be a better place for him. He's kind of getting outpaced uh, by, you know, some of the solo laners. So it's just hard for him to get anything done right now. Um, we gotta say, in terms of jungle matchups, Duddy Brains has been putting a lot of work on this Sejuani. He's got access to the Glacial Tomb, Glacial Prison, picks it up. Mega Inferno Bomb over the top, and Duddy Brains picks up his fourth kill of the game. Like we were saying, putting in work on this Sejuani, really making his presence known across the map. We love the big hamster rider, now dropping the Herald down in the mid lane. Just going to continue to propel Clue ahead with more gold. It's something I love to see when you have this this Ziggs ADC is just continuing to farm resources into him. And then here in the mid game. Good hook onto Air Tone. He drops the death charge, gets his Aftershock active, getting damage onto Godheim, but he's just traded away immediately. Akshan diving forward, looking for access with that heroic, uh, heroic swing. No extra kills are found there. Just one kill picked up for him. And he did go for the wit's end first item. We were talking a bit about this before the game. Akshan's itemization choices. Uh, going into Ziggs, Sejuani, and Nautilus, he's opted to pick up that magic resist. Uh, we'll have to see if uh, Kovu and Laws can punish him for that one. 
Absolutely. And, and, you know, the damage from his passive early enough with that three hit combo mixed with PTA and just the free attack speed steroid that you do get from wits in, it's completely viable. And especially in a matchup, like you were saying, with so many AP threats on the board. But what they are doing smart is from the sides of Dudbro is they're continuing to rotate Ziggs around the map, can just kind of keep him ahead, get some waves, run away, rinse, wash, repeat, never really keeping him in one spot. That's just really hard for the side of Urgotum to try to match up. Ogu looking to be engaged. A good flash over the wall from Airtone means the Fallen is going to be stuck in the cage for a while. Barrier burned. There's that Conqueror healing again. Kovu's just going to be left on a sliver of HP. And now Fallen has to battle Airtone on his own. But the Nautilus damage might be too big for him. The Conqueror healing not enough. Airtone going to pick that one up. And Kovu surviving with a sliver of HP. Kovu cannot get a win today. He's been a part of a five of the eight kills in the game, but has not been able to pick up a single one yet. Oh he's doing God. his best. We have to say his impact on the map has been great. Uh, he's keeping, he was keeping Jimbo Slice down early. He's keeping down Fallen. It's just a matter of he's take, he's getting his life traded back and he's just not able to pick up the kills. A tragedy for him. We just hate, we hate that for him. But he is now sitting on that Divine Sunder that is going to give him more durability in these team fights and able to trade even more heavily. Uh, the question will be is, really what is in response i mean set just sitting on a long sword right now in comparison so we'll have to see which way set kind of goes i believe gore drinker is probably the best bet but yeah gore drinker is usually what we see set start and speaking of we haven't seen him recall in a long time he's just been sitting up in this top lane with laws uh speaking of gore drinker law is also going to be going for that build yeah sitting on 2k right now is set just looking for that recall opportunity maybe looking for a trade onto laws right now Somehow winning out on the damage trade, but now Kovu is here, maybe looking to pick up his first kill of the game. A good haymaker back onto Laws, but hey! it's just not enough, and Kovu gets his first kill. Now there in the meantime, Airtone gets the engage onto Godheim, but the death charge is immediately burned on Apache Helicopter to make sure that they can walk away. Yeah, the safety of this Nautilus uh, Ziggs bot lane cannot be underestimated. You have to get that perfect engage onto Ziggs if you want to pick up a kill on them. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and you know, that's the other piece that uh, didn't talk about a lot, but if we have a second, if Aratone doesn't have other ideas, is Lol's going for the Conqueror uh, into uh, Gore Drinker build is oh, we're gonna have to put it up. Aratone gets the engage of the Glacial Prison onto a Patrick Helicopter. He's just blown up immediately. Zed not allowed to even get his death mark off. Apache Helicopter, yeah, exactly, has not been able to get off the ground this game thus far. Ionian Boots, Lucidity, and two Longswords to his name, and is down in farm and kills uh, to Duddy Brains, which is just going to be exacerbated as this game goes on. But the hamster will only continue to get bigger and beefier as we continue, and be less opportunities to really get in on them. So, uh... Right now, we've got Drake coming up in about 30 seconds. Oh, good hook think. from Godim. Dario gets the heroic swing off. Laws gets a lot of damage traded back. And he is going to survive thanks to that extra health that Gorgon could provide him. And yeah, with this Mountain Dragon spawning in about 15 seconds, uh, teleports available from Kovu and Jimbo Slice. So both top laners are going to be able to get into this fight early. Looks like the Mega in front of Death Bomb will also be up at this time, and that is definitely not an ultimate you want to see used against you near the drag pit when you're stuck in one spot. Yeah, definitely going to be uh, dangerous. Right now, it looks like I'm just looking to grab that... Blue side is looking to grab that extra vision control, make sure they can see as soon as that dragon is started up or even have priority on the Drake at the start of it. Got him sitting on a ward. I don't think he knows... Duddy Brain's going to clear out the pink. They're going to look for the engage onto Godheim now. The box comes down, but it might just not be enough to get him out of there. CC to death. Kill given over to Clue. And that's probably going to be the dragon over for Dudbro as well. Oh, well, maybe good guy Akshan looking to get a revive off. Not going to happen. As the heroic swing away, the teleport is burned from Kovu just to make sure that this dragon happens. Looking for the engage onto Dario. Death Charge comes down. The Glacial Prison comes down. They're burning everything for this Akshan. Tiny Brains is now unstoppable. 5-0 and oh onto this Sejuani. Now Fallen looking for some damage straight onto Laws. But yeah, the health from that Gore Drinker just makes Talon so deceptively tanky. If that were a, a lethality Talon, I think he would just be dead from that trade. But for now, it is just going to be Clue barely picking up first tower ahead of Jimbo Slice. Uh, but that is Ziggs with a solo first tower gold under his belt. Post 14, so not all the platings, but still a lot of gold into his pocket. 
Oh, oh a great steal from Apache Helicopter! He picks up the dragon with the shadow burst, stealing that dragon away right from under Tony Brain's nose! How did he pull that off? That is when you see pings going on to your teammates. Smite. That was illegal in about 16 states. But nonetheless, Apache Helicopter picks up the second Drake of the game for Urgotum. That was absolutely wild. How did he get that? There was a pink ward in the pit. Did he have his own pink in the pit? I didn't get the chance to see. I wasn't expecting anything to happen in that dragon pit. Oh my god, Apache Helicopter looking for his way to get off the ground in this game, and he may have just found it. That is the best thing I have seen in a minute. Oh my gosh. We're going to have to continue to see how this plays out in terms of ionization and as they move forward. The thing I will say, Cassiopeia going for the Everfrost. I is... do like the Everfrost here. Good trade from Jimbo Slice. I think the Everfrost is really good. Oh, flash forward into the Stone Gaze, and Akshan is here for the follow-up damage. He has access to the Heroic Swing. He's going to pick it up and use that reset to get himself out, but it might not be in the right direction. A good Ooh. flash away burns his heal as well, but the Glacial Present is there. Are they finally going to get the kill over to Kobu? No. <laughs> Dirty Brain says all the kills are mine in this game. 8 out of 15 KP, 6 and 0 oh on the Sejuani. He is a monster right now. You know, I don't know what to say other than that was a moment where you thought... You fall and, and you now shouldn't. in trouble, the depth charge on top of him. The Hextech ultimatum issued as well, and Kovu picks up his second kill of the game. They're finally giving the kills. There we over go. To the, <laughs> over to the Camille. And that's the beauty of Camille, and one of the reasons I feel like she is always a threat in team play, regardless of where she's at, is the Hextech ultimatum just pairs so well. You know, you see the traditional piece. Ooh, of... flash forward from Laws. He's looking for the damage trade onto Apache Helicopter. He's got the Ignite and the passive ticking. He's going to burn down from that double burn from Laws. And now Gotti, now maybe in a bit of trouble, but is able to walk out of here. Great limit testing from Laws, knowing exactly where his damage points are at this point of the game. Yeah, and that's that Conqueror Gore Drinker coming into play even more. It, you know, I a lot of uh, Talon players, from what I've seen, opt into this when there's more melee where they know they're going to have a little bit more extended skirmishes as opposed to that come in from the wings and just one shot somebody the tankiness that it provides as well as the lifesteal just allows them to stay in the pocket be able to get off the combo and as you see walk away like a cool guy while the ignite ticks them down so seeing the power of those zig satchel chargers taking down his second tower of the game extending that gold lead for dudbro gaming to about three thousand now maybe about three and a half but with the dragons in favor of ergotum it's going to be a lot more difficult for them to uh stack up those infernal dragons which is really what the, both teams want to be doing here oh yeah absolutely yeah to go to the earlier point about ionization, I don't know how I feel about the Ever Everfrost on Cassiopeia. I generally, uh, seen Leandri's Torment have that burn damage continue to burn people down over time as a mixture with your own poison uh, into usually a Seraph's Embrace second. We see her pick up the Seeker's Arm Guard to try to get some base armor against uh, the Talon, who has been the bane of her existence to a degree. Good hook onto Air Tone, but a good block from Gawke. Finally procs his own Aftershock. Death Charge onto Dario, into the Glacial Prison. And the CC combo from the side of Dude Bro Gaming has just been insane. Duddy Brain's on top of these Glacial Prisons. Now Kovu 4-1. and one. The shutdown goals across the board. Uh, except for the bottom laners of Dudbro. Now Apache Helicopter may be in a bit of trouble. Kovu gets the true damage on top of him, flashes forward. A great Ooh. hook from Airtone is just going to guarantee that kill. And now with the Rift Herald and his Ziggs in this mid lane, this could be an inhibitor tower, if not an inhibitor going down, with all five members barreling down, looking to pick this one up. Absolutely. The pick potential from Dudbro Gaming is out of this world. If it's not the if it's not one thing the from the nautilus hook then it's the hextech ultimatum if it's not the hextech ultimatum then it's going to be the glacial prison if it's not the glacial prison then it's lols coming in from a side angle and just one shotting you the amount of control they have in these team fights is is scary uh to be on the side of ergotum right now yeah especially with low mobility carries like cassio like akshan when he doesn't have that heroic swing Neither of them having access to cleanse means a Sejuani ult is pretty much death for them unless nobody else is around. Law is getting a bit of extra damage onto Jimbo Slice, but it's just the health bar trade from those Gore Drinker users. 
Good hook from Gawking, getting big damage onto Airtone. Pops all of his shields. He is going to be able to walk away from that one, but he takes a lot of his health in trade for that one. But they still have so many tools, and that's the beautiful part, is they continue to control this river just off of... There Rocky we go. Looking for his way into Glacial Prison, lands in. The good old team from Jimbo Slice gets a lot of damage on the top of the tanky front line. But in the meantime, Kovu's on the back line. He's running amok. Loss is looking for the damage on the Fallen. Good hook from Godkeem. Dudbrains is now godlike. Fallen is getting the damage trade back. The Conqueror and the healing putting in a lot of work for him. But Clue is going to pick him up there. One for three overall in favor of Dudbro. And they are looking strong in this game right now. Absolutely, they have hidden that point. Having a 7 0 Sejuani, they can just stand there and say, I'll go in whenever I want, as well as a few melee users on their side to continue to proc that passive. It's just such a beautiful thing. And you just see that their ability to dance around these team fights, where, where you know, Apache Helicopter is a little bit behind and not to that perfect form of where you would usually see a mid lane Zed at 20 minutes into the game, means that there's not oh, as much. That's mean. <laughs> he picks up the uh the anathema's chains i'm not sure who they're on right now but oh that is gonna be brutal for whoever lands that ulti i have to assume it's either gonna go on to fallen or daria but oh he just really wants to make sure that cc combo comes all the way through absolutely and that is a great pickup i think at this point you know sejuani doesn't get any more dynamic sejuani is big Sejuani hit, Sejuani stun, and that's the name of the game. So I think that's another great pickup to continue to be that beefy front line and really just hamstring uh, the side of Urgotum from being able to get access onto anybody. Hamstring. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, Dario <laughs> looking to find that second item now. He's been a little bit stunted sitting on top of this new quiver for a minute now. Uh, as well as Apache Helicopter. Both these carries, these... Uh, Big damage traders for the side of uh, or got them looking for their second item. In the meantime, Laws and Fallen trading ultimates in the top side. Level lead in the favor of Laws. Now it's just a heal battle. Laws gets rooted up. Fallen looking to get the Twin Fangs off onto him. A great dodge from the poison means Laws is going to win that one. But given the item disparity, it's way closer than it had any right to be. Oh, absolutely. And that's, you know, again, what I think the difference when we talk about Everfrost, Vice, the Leandris Torment. There was a lot of damage lost out there for what seems like little payoff having the cc to be able to kite in space better in the form of everfrost may be great but you're seeing the loss in dps where you're sitting on that fully stacked seraph's embrace as well as uh, everfrost just not uh, feeling as nearly as good and now having to opt into uh, the zhania's hourglass next uh, just really spells you know like a jack of all trades style vice the the glass cannon damage that cassiopeia is kind of known for yeah we are seeing the gold starting to get picked up in favor of dodbro gaming they are definitely slipping their way ahead and farther ahead into this game 600 gold shut down on top of cat on top of uh kovu 700 shut down gold on top of this <laughs> sejuani who's not died once this game this beefy frontliner when right now, I think uh, Ergotum are really missing out on that tank shred that Akshan needs to be providing. Oh, absolutely. And that becomes the piece of, you know, how do I approach this situation? And the only way that I think that Ergotum can approach Dudbro Gaming is to get them in a spot where they could see and fight front to back. That's But that's the issue with the damage profile right now, being towards that Gore Drinker. Uh, on the set that's just trying to be like a beefy frontliner, CC them up and stay alive, and then turning into, you know, the Eclipse over on Apache Helicopter. There's just not a whole lot there in terms of how am I going to kill Camille? How am I going to kill Sejuani in this deceptively uh, strong uh, Talon? There's only one target, really, that says, I can squish you quickly, and that is the Ziggs. Uh, but their ability to get to him thus far has been mixed at best. So they have to fight front to back. They have to have that damage profile and say, we're just going to stop you where you stand. Although they haven't been able to do it yet. I think that's the name of the game plan moving forward for them. Now, this is going to be a crazy call out, but uh, mm -hmm. I think right now, Got Heem, for as well as he's been playing, needs to itemize into some kind of Mikhail's some kind of cleanse for his uh, ADC and mid laner because neither of them right now are building QSS. And as we've seen, that Glacial Prison has meant death for uh, the side of Urgotum. And no matter who gets picked out by it, it's getting taken out. And if they're not going to build cleanse, uh, somebody needs to build a cleanse for them. 
Uh, so I think they need a little bit more of that safety, and Thresh is not going to be the super tanky frontliner that he normally is in this kind of game, where Nautilus is going to be doing his job better, and Set is going to be doing his job better, and even Sejuani much better than he can. He just needs to be playing for that peel and that backline protection. If he picks up a Mikhail's, maybe even a Redemption just to try and keep them alive for longer. I think it looks like he's going for Redemption. Right now it's going to have to go on pause. Duddy Brains misses out on the Glacial Prison. Good W from Hatchy Helicopter keeping him safe. Looks like both these teams just settling up for this Infernal Dragon right now. Dubro Gaming looking for their second of the game. Good hook from Gotheem. Damage coming down onto Airtone. He's hugely bursted out. The comeuppance not coming after him just yet. Jimbo Slice looking for his way in. Doesn't get the Showstopper off just yet. Good dodge onto the Haymaker from Duddy Brains. Forced to flash away. Patchy Helicopter looking for his cleanup here. It looks like nothing but just health bar trades. But it's going to be the Infernal Dragon and third Dragon for the side of Ergot. I'm not sure how they got the priority so much onto this Dragon. But they picked it up. Good hook onto Kovu. Means that this fight is going to start off a little bit rough. Godlike now onto the Camille. Patchy Helicopter looking for the burst onto Clue. He's going to get it. Clue gets bursted out. Lost in the back line. Picks up the kill onto Dario Lippa as well. And he's going to be able to walk away from there. Duddy, Duddy Brains trying to walk away from here. Jimbo Slice looking for the trade back. Gets the flash forward. Shutdown gold given over to him. Patchy Helicopter looking for the damage trade onto Kovu. Flashes forward. Gets that E off. But he is going to be bursted out immediately by Laws. Good Haymaker. Big true damage onto Laws. Now suddenly the dive is a bit more threatening, but Airtone is here looking for the Hex Flash over the wall, making sure his team stays protected. But it looks like both sides are just going to back off here. Messy, messy team fight. Oh, gosh. Ergotim's trying to give me a heart attack with this overstay in the bot side that could easily just get turned around on. But, you know, that what I was going to say when we were talking about itemization as oh, the TP is coming yet. in. Jobu is here. Good ever for us, but he's going to be picked up immediately by Airtone's hook. The man does not miss except for that one of the early game we don't talk about. Big Haymaker is going to get the damage trade back on the loss, but he's going to survive. The kill is going to go over to Kovu. They're being a little bit BM, staggering those recalls a bit more. Kovu now legendary on the Camille. Eight and one. Hey, and now Kovu is ahead of Duddy Brains at eight and one and the Sejuani. The hamster finally died. But before, when we were talking about the Mikhails, we were talking about the itemization from Thresh. It was the key point is that if you're in the driver's seat, if you're ahead on gold as an engage support, you could take these trades all day and go in because you're so far ahead. But when you're behind like you are, the thing you can't do is just go in on every hook. You have to oh, play it Duddy incredibly in smart. Trouble. He's taking a lot of his health back, but now God, he not having those tank stats gets immediately blown up. Apache Helicopter gets the trade back, but that's a double kill given over to Laws. Good heroic swing from Dario Lupa is means he might be able to get out, but a good flash forward from Laws and the hook... The the parkour to reposition the W, a triple kill for this talent. He's piloting it greatly. Fallen looking for the huge engage. Gets the stun immediately in the shutdown. Clue looking to run away here. Fallen looking for the damage. Pops his barrier. He's trying to get any health back off of his conquer that he can, but the blow up from Clue means he's going to take him out. But it is going to be a double kill for Fallen. Looking to make sure that his teammates did not die in vain. A four for three across the map. Oh, man. This is continued, continued action. Lol's ability to pilot this talent and be have surgical pinpoint precision with these Ws is actually just like a masterclass right now. We're just seeing how much damage he can put out and how much of a late game threat he has become. Now sitting on a Black Cleaver as well as Yoma's Ghostblade. So itemizing very smartly into the set, into the Thresh, and just saying your natural resistances won't mean much after I get done with you. Uh, it's really great to see that smart itemization. Uh, on their side and now at this point if you're a, a Gotham fan you know it it goes back to the concept of you have to fight this front to back you have to play this slow and allow your your carries to get this poke in get this damage over time uh concept to where it's now fighting on your footing uh and getting through some of these tankier members you have somebody who's been kind of sneaking through the uh Sneaking through the rafters and sneaking under our radar here it has been Clue on the Zigs. Four and three, not the most impressive scoreline, but he's on that three on a power spike. We're gonna have to take a pause on that. He's starting to get bursted out. A good Zonny's on a Mega Inferno Bomb over the top. It's a big amount of damage. Laws picks up Dario Lupa. Apache Helicopter looks for the trade back onto Clue. He does get picked up, but in the meantime, Jibo Slice is the only one left alive. Clue being the only one to die in that fight. Five, or not five, but four for one in favor of Dudbro Gaming. Really well played from them, and it looks like that might be the Baron picked up for themse themselves as well. Oh yeah. The presence of mind of Clue to press that stopwatch at that time actually uh, prevents 
Jimbo Slice from getting the Showstopper down onto him. I, I don't know who he actually threw, but nonetheless, saved him very well in that team fight. Really good uh, use there. And now it's just an easy uh, Baron pickup for the side of Dudbro. Honestly, everybody besides Clue on Dudbro Gaming has so much HP. The Showstopper, definitely a threat no matter who he throws. So I think using that stopwatch there, even though he did end up dying to the Haymaker and to the damage of the Zed, it was definitely a good usage. Oh, yeah. Well, and now we see Duddy Brain sitting on those three items. Has the Warmogs. Uh, very core item for Sejuani and really puts her in that position where she can continue. You can see how many more ticks on her health bar she has than anybody else on the screen right now. Gives you an idea of how big she is and will continue just to get bigger as she scales into the game. Glacial Prison goes a bit wide. Uh, if I'm Jimbo Slice in this game, I am looking at this Sejuani and I am licking my lips. But in me speaking of licking lips, Laws looking for the pick out on the fall and hit that forehead and power spike. A good Zanyas looks to get the lantern, but no, no time for him to even pick it up. It's just going to be the good pick out. Laws just, just been a menace in this game, almost sitting full build on this talent. Absolutely. And he has roamed around. You know, I kind of criticized him early for his roams around the map, but now you're seeing how well it pays off and just creating all this pressure and saying you're not allowed to exist anywhere in your own jungle, anywhere in your own lanes. Oh, Apache looking to get another miracle steal in. He gets the burst. He steals it again. He's insane on this end. And that's going to be Infernal Soul given over to Urgotum. Oh my god. That is. We were worried about the Zed before the game started. Zed not being like the best team fighting champion, but he's been putting in work with these objective steals. That passive plus smite damage means that he's just able to take out these dragons from under the nose of Dunbar Gaming. Looks like they're going to give up an inhibitor for it. But now with the Infernal Soul on their backs, it's suddenly a lot more threatening. The flash forward from Airtone, good flash away from Dario Lupa. Jimbo Slice in the meantime on the bottom side of the map, taking a bit of extra damage. The inhibitor goes down, good sidestep from Fallen. Gap charge comes through, Kovu looking for the damage. A great hook from, uh, great hook from Thresh means he's gonna be protected for a little bit longer. Jimbo Slice tries to get in, but it's not enough. He gets bursted out before the Showstopper can come down. In the meantime, Gokin gets picked out by a bomb as well. They were just praising Apache for maybe saving the game, but we may have cast a curse at him again as it looks Looks like Dodbro are looking to end the game here. A great stopwatch from Clue means he's not going to be picked up by the Zed Death Mark. And a double kill given over to King Kovu at the end of this game means it is going to be Dodbro all the way through to the end of the game. Impressive Dragon Steals, but it's just not enough. Mom called YouTube. Apache Helicopter is cracked at Fortnite, stealing dragons, but Dodbro Gaming is just too much with that pick potential with the early rotates with the large hamster and the blade lady in the top lane as well as talon parkouring around it was just so much masterfully played all around yeah definitely a difficult game from both sides uh i have to say really impressively played uh from duddy brains in the early game accelerating all of his uh important lanes ahead laws in the mid and late game like you said, surgical precision on the talent. Kovu, despite the rough early game start, ending 12-1 and 14 on Camille, being an absolute menace to these immobile carries from the side of Ergotum, and just a well-earned win for Dudbro Gaming. I think that's all we have for our games tonight. Want to take it away, Regdar? Absolutely. Everybody, thanks again for stopping by and watching the GRLCS. A platinum uh, capped league, the Sentinel side, for Week 5. Uh, if you guys need anything, continue to do great things, and we'll see you here next week. Hope you all take care.